Greetings everyone once again, it's the Ambassador and we've got a brand new video for you today. And we're going to be continuing our Babylon 5 series and we're going to be covering um, a very unique individual within the B5 universe. And he's... <laughs> to say that he is a clown and a bit of a character and honestly a character with great depth is a, is a great understatement. And we're going to be covering the one and the only Mr. Michael Garibaldi. And to start off, when you talk about Michael Garibaldi, you of course have to talk about the man who portrayed him and portrayed him masterfully, the late um, Jerry Doyle. Now, I don't know a great deal about Jerry Doyle and anything from his career and anything beyond Babylon 5, but from what I have been able to gather, he was a comedian, or anything, a stand-up comedian, as far as I know. And he did travel in um, certain political circles and everything. And I think he brought some of, honestly, I thought he brought those two aspects of his personality very much to his role as Michael Garibaldi. Because Garibaldi, or anything, he was a very unique individual. He kind of played off just about every single character on the in the Babylon 5 TV show and in the movies or anything. Grant, he wasn't in too many of the movies. I think he was just, I think he was only maybe in one or two. Um, I know for a fact he was in Third Space, and I think he might have been in River of Souls, possibly. Um, but as far as Michael Garibaldi goes, you never quite knew what he was going to come out of his mouth or what he was going to do next or anything from episode to episode. He is what you might call a wild card character. And I think, honestly, that's one of the great intriguing aspects of Michael Garibaldi that we have from the, from the show. Because he was... One minute he could have you busting out laughing with some one-liner or some joke or some observation that he would make. And the next minute, he could have you thinking very hard and very seriously about some dilemma that the crew on the station was dealing with or something that the one of the ambassadors was dealing with or so on. And to try and encompass him in a single video is a challenge because of all the characters that J. Michael Straczynski wrote for Babylon 5, Garibaldi, honestly, he had one of the most complex story or character arcs and also one of the most, at times, tragic, heartbreaking uh, story arcs within the show. Now, granted, towards the end, things did turn around for him. Things did get better. But I think, honestly, either it was at the behest of uh, Jerry Doyle or anything. He talked with Draczynski and said, hey, I've got some input about how I, what direction I want my character to go in. Because if you look at Garibaldi the first couple of seasons of Babylon 5, he stood out, obviously, and... I will be perfectly candid with you all. It's going to be hard to come down on a link, a set of, of clips or anything to kind of encompass uh, Jerry and uh, Michael Garibaldi uh, or anything like I've normally done. I know I didn't have a chance to do it for my uh, Ambassador Jakar video and everything because the thing with the thing with uh, Garibaldi is. He played off of Sinclair, he played off of Ivanova, he played off of, obviously, Sheridan, and so many other of the other characters in the show. He, the two ambassadors that he played off particularly well, at least I thought, was Londo, Malare, and obviously, as I just mentioned, Jakar. But I think that's one of the really great things about Garibaldi is... He's almost what you might consider a mirror for these characters. He was he had the ability to be very introspective about the people around him and he was very he was very much able to think on his feet. 
and very rarely did anything get past him that he wasn't either prepared for or was going to be aware of at some point already. The only time anybody ever got the drop on him or anything, for some of you who might, may have watched the show, was I think it was toward the end, yeah, it was at the end of season one when the plot line or anything involving the assassination of Prince, Prince uh, President Santiago um, is carried out. And it's one of Garibaldi's old men that aids in smuggling uh, some equipment onto the station for a group that is working to carry out Santiago's assassination. And it isn't until Lita, no, not Lita, uh, Talia Winters does a mind scan on Garibaldi that Garibaldi figures out that it was actually one of, no, I stand corrected. Um, Talia Winters actually tells, I think it's Franklin or, or um, Sinclair or Ivana, but one of those three, that it was one of uh, Garibaldi's own men that shot him in the back and wounded him very, very, very badly. So, but the other incident and everything is actually at the end of season three when you have the shadow vessels uh, surround Babylon 5 after Sheridan has been gone back with his wife and everything to Zaha Doom. And you have Garibaldi get caught by a shadow vessel and what ends up do what ends up happening is that Garibaldi is um, reprogrammed mentally to be a sleeper, well, sort of a sleeper agent for the Psychor. And he doesn't know this and everything at first, but over time he finally pieces together what happened to him after he his ship gets captured by a shadow vessel and taken or anything back to Psychor headquarters or one of their secret bases or whatever. And he ends up finally coming to the realization that he is basically being used by Bester, um, which is one of the um, one of the Psychops. He is a reoccurring character played by Walter Koning. And for those of you who might not know who Walter Koning is, that's the guy that played um, um, Pavel Chekhov in the original Star Trek uh, series and in the movies. And um, there's also a great dynamic between those two characters as well and everything. It's very adversarial because Garibaldi does not have any great love for the Psychor, no more than... Um, as I mentioned in anything in my my Ivanova video, uh, Ivanova has no love, obviously, for good reason for the Psychor, and Garibaldi, he doesn't trust them whatsoever. But the thing that happens is Bester has Garibaldi programmed as an agent for them, an unknowing and unwitting agent, and then obviously a very unwilling agent, but the, there you go. Um, Garibaldi is working for Psychor and everything, and there's actually this really great scene. It's a really heartbreaking scene as well. I think it's during season, I'm pretty sure it's during season four, where Garibaldi has um, gone back to Mars and everything, because that's one of his earlier postings that he worked on and everything in his career. Because one of the things about Garibaldi is he has gone from post to post, outpost, from base to base throughout his entire career. And unfortunately, he's gotten kind of a bad reputation because of some unsavory people that he worked under. And they smeared him and everything. But thankfully, um, Jeffrey Sinclair gave him a chance and everything to be the security chief there on Babylon 5. And obviously, um, Garibaldi was there for a certain number of years and everything until he, due to the um, telepathic reprogramming, ends up quitting Um his position at Babylon 5, and he ends up going off as a freelance um, search and rescue agent or something along those lines. Or anything. This uh, takes place after um, the Shadow War ends. And what ends up happening with Garibaldi is he ends up being brought into this major uh, corporation or anything um, that operates on Mars and Earth and, and so on. I cannot recall off the top of my head the name of the corporation, but his um, one-time fiance or anything, uh, Lisa and everything, who actually ended up Edgar's 
Eggers Industries. That was the name of the corporation. Knew it would come to me if I just thought long enough. Or if I talked enough. <laughs> More accurate. But um, what ends up happening is Garibaldi gets, in, gets into the inner workings of Eggers Industries. But this is done deliberately or anything because the side core is worried that uh, Eggers Industries is developing some sort of counter agent for the telepathic gene or something that would uh, render uh, telepaths unable to read other people's minds because the founder of Eggers Industries fears that a war is going to uh, occur between normal people and telepaths and the sad thing is we never see this uh, story carry out in total and everything and and everything I've mentioned this before there were a couple of storylines that were kind of abruptly dropped or anything in season five and this sadly was one of them because what ends up happening with Garibaldi is that he becomes the head of Eggers Industries and he kind of gets out from under the thumb of Psychor and in particular Bester. But what he does is uh, he goes back to Babylon 5 or anything and uh, sort of, uh, runs down um, Lita Alexander because she's a obviously at this point a very powerful telepath and I've discussed her already. But he goes to her because she knows that he, Garibaldi knows that she can break these telepathic commands that were implanted in Garibaldi's mind and everything by the Psycor because he wants to get rid of Bester. And I guess they may have done some, I, I know a couple of people have commented and everything that there have been some books that have been done to fill in the gaps and everything of where season five left off. And I'm honestly very grateful. I never got a chance to read them, unfortunately. I may if I have time, um, do so and everything, because I'd really like to know how some of these storylines ended up. But you get the very distinct impression that Lita does help Garibaldi because she, he does uh, some favors for her, being he's um, now uh, co-head of um, Eggers Industries with um, uh, his uh, his now um, uh, the late uh, Egg uh, the late head of Eggers Industries and everything, uh, his wife, and everything, which is the same woman that he was uh, going to get married to. Um, Several, several years prior to him um, going to Babylon 5 as security chief. But I think um, one of the other inter interesting things about Garibaldi is one, one part of his story arc and everything, and it's something that is addressed more so in the earlier seasons than it is in like season four or whatever, but apparently Garibaldi had a very bad um, alcohol problem, drinking problem, and the one of the great story, one of the great story arcs or anything with Garibaldi that he's that he interacts with is actually with him and Stephen Franklin. And I am going to get to Doctor Franklin, um, if not this week, definitely next week, because obviously I've got a lot of content to put together and everything. But there's a good dynamic and everything, and it's a good Back, go uh, back and forth between Garibaldi and Franklin and everything because Garibaldi's dealt with his own demons when it comes to addiction. He's addicted to uh, drinking and uh, uh, Franklin and everything gets addicted to what they call stims and everything. Uh, it's like a stimulant that helps you. It's a drug that helps you keep going. It's legal and everything in the B5 universe, but unfortunately it can become very addictive. And unfortunately Franklin does become addicted to it. And uh, Garibaldi tries to help Franklin out and everything and says, hey, guy, but because these two guys have worked together for a long, number of years and they know each other well. And there's a level of respect and friendship between the two of them. And Garibaldi is trying to get Franklin to pull his head out of his butt and say, man, I know what you're going through. And I want to help you. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen. But I think that's one of the great things about Garibaldi is he does have his flaws. He does have his imperfections. He is very, very complicated, but at the same time, he's also very, very likable. And I think that's something that uh, that's a great aspect of his character. He's not one note. And I know I've said that about all these characters I've done so far and everything from Babylon 5, but it's honestly very true. None of these characters are one note. They do evolve. They do change. They do grow. And honestly, I wish Babylon 5 had gone longer than five seasons, but it is what it is. 
and everything, because I would have loved to see how they tied up all these story arcs with all the characters and everything, in particular Garibaldi. I would have loved to seen that moment where uh, he finally gets the draw. He gets the best of. Um, I think the guy's name, I think uh, Malta Koenig's character's his first name, I think it's Alfred, Alfred Vester, the Psychop. And I think, see that story come to its conclusion. But, um, as I've mentioned before, Garibaldi, you never knew what was going to come out of his mouth. You never knew what he was going to try and pull next. And I'll leave you all with one of my favorite um, bits or anything. I think it's from, I'm pretty sure it's from uh, season one or anything. And he's trying to find somebody and everything to come hang out at his quarters and everything after he's off duty. And he's always sitting on women. And I think that was actually kind of a neat thing about him and everything. He wasn't doing, he wasn't overly aggressive, but he's like, he was his catch on. He's like, I can show you my favorite thing in the universe. And he, unfortunately, most people, you go to a rather <laughs> dirty place. But what turns, what ends up happening is... <coughs> Ambassador Dolin and everything takes Garibaldi up on his offer because she finally, I guess they, he explains it off screen. He's like, this is my favorite thing in the universe. It's not what you think. And what you see is the two of them are sitting on his couch or anything there in his quarters. And they're watching old Daffy Duck cartoons. And you actually, in his quarters, you have a picture of Daffy Duck. It's a painting. It's like just his head and he's got this exasperated look on his face. Daffy Duck does. And <laughs> Garibaldi is sitting there laughing his head off because I think it's actually a Duck Dodgers short and everything from one of D uh, Daffy Duck's uh, Daffy Duck cartoon and everything where Porky Pig is um, his sidekick or whatever. And Garibaldi is just sitting there laughing his head off and Delenn's going I don't quite understand this, but at the same time, it's actually kind of intriguing. And as I mentioned before in a, uh, a couple of bits and everything with Garibaldi, is that he can make you laugh, he can make you think, and at times his story does have some down, down moments. And I think that's what made him so captivating and so interesting throughout the five seasons of Babylon 5. So. And um, as far as Jerry Doyle goes, unfortunately we lost him, if I remember correctly, back in 2016. And 2016 was a bad year for us to lose some big name and small name actors and actresses and everything. But I highly suggest anything if you want a character that's got a lot of depth and a lot of complexity to him or anything you can't go wrong with mr garibaldi michael garibaldi or anything as he's uh, known so well or anything on the station so uh that is uh all i've got for you today in terms of uh, garibaldi and this installment in the b5 universe series if you are new to my channel welcome i hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you have any additional comments down or anything to add, by all means, uh, comment down below. If you um, like my video, give it a like, give it a share, and everything. And uh, let, every, let other people know, hey, there's somebody out there that's doing something other than Star Trek and Star Wars and Watchmen and everything. So, and to all of you who have been with me from the beginning, thank you for watching, obviously. And uh, until next time, this is The Ambassador, signing off.